Welcome to the Westport Library. Today's program will begin momentarily. Supported by Verso Studios, created locally and shared with the world. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jennifer, I'm with the programming team here at the Westport Library and Thank you all for coming out today for this afternoon of fabulous jazz. Before I get today's, to today's program, you may have seen something about the Brubeck, I can't even say it. Thank you, Brubeck Brothers Quartet, coming March 9th. Um, if you like more jazz, check out this event. Um, tickets are found on our website, westportlibrary.org, and there are flyers around the library um, if you need more information. So hopefully we'll see you back there then. All right. So without further ado, because you all don't wanna hear me, today we are so happy to have Sherry Winston and her band. Um, for those of you who don't know her, she is an amazing jazz flautist, flutist, however you prefer to say it. She's played for not one but two American presidents, and today she's going to play for you. So, Sherry, come on up.
Thank you. That was Morning Star, and that's from our fourth CD. What a wonderful audience. My goodness. I expected to see three people here today because it's Super Bowl Sunday. So I told Jennifer, our lovely host and the person that hired us, please don't make it on Super Bowl Sunday because nobody's going to come. She said, yes, they will. I said, no, they won't. She said, yes, they will. No, they won't. So it looks like you won, Jennifer. <clears throat> so thank you for taking time out of your Sunday to be with us because there's nothing that we love more than a wonderful big audience. And I'm shocked, pleasantly so. So anyway, we are so anxious to play for you today and so glad to be here in Westport. We haven't been in Westport in a long time. So this is a lovely town, and ladies, a lovely town to walk around and go into all the little shops. So Travis back there, I need a little bit more in my monitor. If you don't mind, where is Travis? He's upstairs. He's upstairs. Yeah, I'm not getting enough out of my, whoa, hello, <clears throat> okay. We're going to do, you, do something for you now that was written by Louis Bonifa for the movie Black Orpheus. And it was written in 1959. And this is a song that I still enjoy playing. It was, the setting was a Greek myth of Orpheus and Eudice in the slums of Rio de Janeiro. And it's called The Day in the Life of a Fool. But it's also called Black Orpheus.
Thank you. We'd like to do the title song of a song that we did quite a while ago called Love Is, and I think it's apropos for this time of year since we, I consider this the Valentine month, and it's also my birthday month, so <laughs> happy birthday to me. So it's just wonderful. If you know anything about my music, all of my CDs have a love title. So I'm a person that believes in love for the world and us spreading love as opposed to hate and the kind of dissension that's going on in the country right now. We need more people to speak out about loving each other. And even if you don't know someone, you know, just loving the fact that you're on this earth the same time that they are is kind of special. And that we're in this spot I know a lot of people here, but there are a lot of people that I don't know, but I feel a certain kinship with you because we're all part of the human race, number one, but number two, we all obviously love music and we're here to share in this gift that God has given all of us on the stage. And you know, sometimes we don't realize our gifts or we don't acknowledge them and for years, you know, I said, hey, I'm not talented. You know, I just play the flute and I work hard and whatever. And I realized how many people on earth play an instrument and can do it professionally. So when I was a little girl, I always wanted to perform for a living. But most people told me, that's not possible. Forget about playing a flute. Who the heck wants to hear that, you know? <laughs> so you kind of have to forge your own way and you've got to get a couple of cohorts that believe in you. Whatever it is, if you know, I hear people tell me all the time, oh, I'm too old to learn an instrument, or I'm too old to start writing a book or to write poetry. I should have done that a long time ago. It's never too late to do anything. I started uh, recording very late in life. So don't let people stomp on your dreams. They're your dreams. God gave you those dreams. So just believe that whatever it is that you want to do it with enough sweat equity in it and sacrifice, because it is sacrifice, you know. Every day after I do my work in my office, I have to practice. And if you think I want to practice this thing every day, forget about it. I don't. I really don't. I mean, I've been playing since I'm a little girl. So it's like enough already. Let me do something else. But... If I'm not going to stand up here and embarrass myself, I have to practice. And all the guys on the stage are in the same boat. We all have to practice. So believe in your dream. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. So for all of you dreamers out there, this song is for you. It's called Love Is.
here.
Thank you. I'm getting ready to announce it. <clears throat> you know, we have to shake it up a little bit here, because otherwise you all are going to know what I'm doing every minute of the day, and that's not good. Women are supposed to be mysterious, right? <laughs> so, and if that's the only air of mystery I got, I'm in trouble. <laughs> anyway, that is called Do It For Love. It holds a special place in my heart because it's the very first song I ever recorded. And I was paying for the recording. We were recording like, I think, 12 or 13 songs. So my hands were going like this because I was thinking, oh my God, I don't have this money. How am I going to do this? And there was a gentleman there. Uh, he came over and he was just there to support me as part of the recording process. He had been recording for a long time and he did uh, music for ad agencies. So he came over and he said, is your liver bothering you? And I said, my liver? I don't think so. How about your spleen? Is your spleen bothering you? And I said, no. He said, what about your heart? How's your heart doing? I said, pretty good. So anyway, he went through my whole body, right? <laughs> By the time he finished, I was totally relaxed. So he had studied meditation, and he knew what to do for me. He had to get my mind off, oh, my God, how many musicians am I playing? How, how much does the studio cost per hour? How many hours are we, is it going to take us? How many hours is it going to take us to mix this? And you're not supposed to be doing that when you're trying to do something that's creative, right? But I'm a business person, so I can't help it. <laughs> so all of that to say, uh, this was written by... Van Gibbs, who was my guitarist at the time, originally, oh, yes, you know Van. And Van is from uh, Barbados, which is one of my favorite places to go to to visit. And Van wrote this song, and he's like a very hands-on producer, so he had to have someone else come and control the session, because otherwise, whatever I played, he would have driven me crazy. It wouldn't have been good enough. You know, that's how Van is. So his partner... Uh, kind of produced the song, and I think it came out well. And that's a long time ago, um, and I still enjoy that song because a good song is a good song, you know, period. I don't care if it's 50 years old, 100 years old, and a bad song is a bad song. <laughs> so it can be brand new, and if it's terrible, it's terrible. But that is a really good song. Speaking of good songs, we're going to do something by Horace Silver. And Horace was born in Norwalk, Connecticut, not too far from here, in 1928. He performed with Stan Getz, the Jazz Messengers, and some of his, or I should say, people that he influenced with some of his music has been Stevie Wonder, Steely Dan, with uh, Stevie's Ricky Don't Lose This Number, and uh, Stevie Wonder Don't You Worry About a Thing. So this is called Song for My Father, Listen for the little strains in here that might be familiar to you, that might just be reminiscent a little of Ricky, don't lose that number, or don't you worry about a thing. You got to listen hard now, because this is some subtle stuff, but it's in there, trust me. Song for my father. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. So this next song is also dear, very dear to me. It's a song that I recorded on my fourth CD. And a girlfriend of mine did a show at the Apollo and she invited Stevie Wonder to come because her husband was having his 96th birthday. This was Hal Jackson, who some of you may know as the first black DJ in the United States. And Hal was on WBLS in New York for something like 50 years. I mean, it was just incredible. And he used to be part of the Jackie Robinson Jazz Festival, if any of you remember that. At one point it came, to Cranberry Park, which is not too far from here in Norwalk, and it was held there. So I had the privilege of playing there for, I guess, maybe about eight years in different locations. And I had seen Herbie Mann as a kid play at the Jackie Robinson. I was sitting in the audience, you know, like looking at this guy thinking, oh my God, I wonder if I could ever be on stage playing the flute. You know, I was just learning how to play. So here I am. <laughs> but. <laughs> Anyway, thank you. So Debbie invited Stevie Wonder, and she said, don't get your hopes up because he might come, he might not come. I'm not paying him, so he's coming to do a tribute to Hal. So, you know, if a musician isn't getting paid, that's iffy, you know, whether we're going to show up or not. I mean, come on, let's face it. So... 
I, they had me rehearse with the house band, and Debbie said, there he is, there he is. And all the ladies started jumping up, and they were all around Stevie and whatnot, and um, the band started playing this song. So I said, oh, my God, am I going to mess this song up? Because I was so nervous. I've been listening to Stevie Wonder all my life. So my hands were literally like this, and I'm going, oh, my God, am I going to actually play this? I said, God, please help me calm down. Please don't let me make any bad notes on this song. This man wrote this song. He'll know if I play a wrong note. I promise I'll be good. I really will. I won't do anything bad in my life again. Just let me play this with Stevie Wonder. So the band fired up. We started playing. And Stevie, these women were all over Stevie, so he wasn't really paying attention. And all of a sudden, you could see him sort of like do like this. And he heard something familiar, and he reached in his pocket, and he pulled out his harmonica, and he stood up. And when I saw him stand up, I said, oh, my God. I started walking towards him, playing his song. And that was the most incredible moment. I mean, that was better than playing for Bill Clinton. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to play this song called Pastime Paradise. And it's something that I recorded on my fourth CD. So we hope you enjoy it.
Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm watch I'm looking at my watch. Where did the time go? My goodness gracious. <laughs> Okay, we've got, oh no, we're not gonna make all of these. I've got four more songs, there's no way. <laughs> okay, I've gotta be selective here, okay. I'm gonna play a song for all the ladies in the house. <clears throat> and this is a song that I wrote for a person that I was dating at the time and in love with. And what do some guys do, ladies? I shouldn't say what they do, right? Right, right. But it's not nice. So anyway, this person did something that wasn't nice. But I had written him the song anyway, and my band member said, after he did it, are you still going to play his song? I said, I wrote it. Of course I'm going to play it. <laughs> you know, you can't let somebody rain on your parade, right? So this song is called Mr. D's Funky Sweet. And it was written for a guy that his first name started with the letter D. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to call his name. He was actually a prominent person and worked in the Obama administration. Yikes, right? So good people do bad things sometimes. <laughs> Isn't that what they say? So anyway. This is a song that I love because it's kind of funky. And, you know, you guys probably need a little exercise today, right? You need to be moving around. So if anybody wants to get up and move around or you just want to dance in your chair, it's okay because we love to see the audience enjoying themselves. So here we go. This is something that's on my six CD. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm going to have CDs for any of you that still have CD players. <laughs> I know you don't have them in your cars because the, the car manufacturers really messed us up by taking those out. I still have, I, I won't buy a new car because I still have a CD player. I'm like, I'm serious. <laughs> but anyway, I know. I also have a book that I've written called For Lovers Only, A Cookbook and More. And it's sort of a funny book because there are all kinds of funny stories that'll make you laugh. There are recipes. There's a CD in it of all love songs, so whoever has a CD, if you're entertaining, you can put the CD on and it's nice and mellow and loving and there's nothing loud and raucous about it. So anyway, I will have that over there. Maybe I can enlist some of my girlfriends over there to help me because I didn't bring a helper today. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So all the ladies in the house, raise your hands. All right, there's a lot of ladies out here. Okay, this is for you and that you'll only have good lovers and good husbands <laughs> and boyfriends in your life. At the same time. No, not at the same time. Oh, <laughs> Mr. D's Funky Sweet.
Wow. All right, Mr. D's Funky Sweet. So, I would like to introduce you to my wonderful band members on keyboards. Someone who studied piano at Juilliard and the University of Detroit. He's played with Harry Belafonte, conductor Zubin Mehta, Hugh Masekela, Wayne Shorter, and the list goes on and on. Mr. Richard Cummings. <laughs> Steve Clark on bass has performed with Marion Meadows, Tom Brown, Benny King, The Drifters. He has released seven CDs under his own, own name. There's more than seven CDs, aren't there? Ten? <laughs> Sorry about that, I gotta change that. And he has performed on over 55 CDs with other artists and has toured all over Europe. Steve Clark on bass. <laughs> on drums, Mr. Joe Hamm has performed with icon Dizzy Gillespie, Gloria Gaynor, Sam and Dave, The Platters, Tom Brown, Little Anthony and Imperials. He's worked on the TV shows for Bill Cosby, A Different World, Living Single, Joe Ham. <laughs> so I would be remiss if I did not mention the wonderful woman who brought us here to this lovely library. I have never been to a library like this in my life. This is really a special library. We would like to thank Jennifer. And we would like to thank our wonderful sound man, Travis. Where are you? Up there. And Dave, who is doing our video recording, which I'm going to be very anxious to see. And my neighbor over there, JC Martin, who's taking some photos. So he's like a fixture here. He does a lot of photography all over Westport and around Connecticut. So. <laughs> I bet no, none of the musicians thought to mention you before, right? Uh, huh? <laughs> anyway, we're so happy to be here. Thank you so much for coming to hear us. Um, if you want to sign our mailing list so that you'll know when we're playing anywhere again, we'll let you know what's going on in our lives. Be happy to have you sign the mailing list, and my friend Jerry there is going to help me with the CDs and the books. So before we go, we have got another song that I wrote called Symphonic Rock Suite. And ooh, we're exactly at 2 o'clock. I don't know if I have time for this. Do we have time for this? We can do it. We're supposed to stop at 2 o'clock. <laughs> oh, three o'clock. Oh, okay. I missed the two o'clock deadline, right? <laughs> so this is a song I wrote, Symphonic Rock Suite number three. This is on our, I believe, my fourth CD. Or is it six? No, fourth. And this is a song that I wrote while I was having lunch with my mother and her girlfriend. And this song, this melody came in my head. And I said, wow, this might be a song, but what am I gonna do? My mom is talking, my, her girlfriend is talking, and how am I gonna remember this? By the time I get home, I will have forgotten it. So who knows what I did? I wrote it down. I didn't have any music paper with me. Huh? On a napkin? No. Okay, another guess, and then I'll tell you. On my arm? Paula, what did you say? No, that was, huh? Yes, what I did, I called myself at home because I have a answering machine and I sang the melody into the answering machine. Then when I got home, I transcribed it onto music paper. And then 
The only part I got was about four measures, right? Do 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 Now you see why I don't sing. So I always say that God gave me that little motif, and now he said, okay, now you do the work. So I'm thinking, oh, my good, what else is part of this song, you know? So I'm walking around my house. I'm cleaning my house. I'm doing different things. Another little section came. Da-da-da, uh, da 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 So then I went and I wrote that down. So this is a song that came in very, a lot of different sections. And I finally had to piece them all together. And this applies to your life. Because you could be home sitting on a couch and you have this great idea for a book. And you let it go by. You say, ah, that's stupid. This is a stupid book. I'm not going to write that. Or, gee, maybe I could write my life story. I had sort of an interesting life story. Nah, that's dumb. I'm not going to do it. Don't let these thoughts and these moments go by. We all have creative energy in us. God has given us all something special. We've got an opera singer back there. Cheryl, where's your hand, Cheryl? And she is incredible. And there are some of you out there that can probably sing, dance, write, do a myriad of things, and you don't do it. Just start somewhere, even if it's just a little, even if it's just one page. And the next day or two, two weeks later, you get another page, you get another idea, add to it. And before you know it, you'll have a book that book that I have over there took me 19 years. I'm serious. I'm not lying now. Because I started writing it, and then I lost faith in it because I tried to get an agent, and nobody would represent me. Who the heck are you to write a book? Who the heck are you? To, you're not a certified chef. Why should we write this? Okay? Ah, that's a dumb idea. Nah, we're not going to publish that. So I put the book down. It sat on my desk for like five years, the part of the manuscript. And then one day I looked over at it, and it was about that thick, and I said, wow, I spent a lot of time writing this. I'm going to do it myself. So I started saving money. I hired an editor. I hired a designer for the cover, designer for the whole book. I went and I found a printer. I found the editor was from Essence Magazine. I got a whole team of people that I knew that were talented together. And that's why it took me 19 years, not because it was 19 years of writing, 19 years of letting it sit on my desk and not do anything. So from the looks of everybody in here, we don't have another 19 years, guys, to play around. <laughs> so <laughs> start, <laughs> including us, we don't have 19 years either. So start doing whatever is in your head that God gave you the thought to do. That is my message for you today. So here is Symphonic Rock Suite. We're going to feature the entire band. Thank you so much again for coming on Super Bowl Sunday. You've been the perfect audience. We have the perfect spot here. We've got the perfect sound person. And this has been an absolute joy. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you. On behalf of Richard Cummings, Joe Hamm, Steve Clark, my name is Sherry Winston, and you all have been magnificent. Thank you for being such a wonderful and supportive, supportive, supportive audience. We appreciate you, thank you. On behalf of the library, thank you all for coming out. Thank you again to the band. One more round of applause. Let's give it up. And again, Sherry will be uh, selling CDs in her cookbook over at the table over there. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much.